Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health, and in today's video we're going to be talking about shoulder pain and labral tears. If you've had shoulder pain and you've gone to the doctor and they've had you do an MRI and they've discovered labral tears in your shoulder, you may have been told this labral tear is what's causing your problem for sure. What's interesting is there is a growing body of medical literature that is completely contrary to that interpretation. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at a couple studies and a couple pieces of research that show that the labral tear may not actually be the thing that's causing your problem. And if that's the case, you can take a different approach to figuring out how to make your shoulder feel better. The first study we're going to look at was published in 2016. If you want to check out the actual study, you can find the links in the description section for this study and every other study that we talk about in this video. So basically what they did was they looked at 53 people between the ages of 45 and 60, all of whom were totally asymptomatic, no shoulder problems, no history of shoulder problems, and they did MRIs on everybody to see what would sh show up. So they had two radiologists actually look at these MRIs and they didn't actually get to meet the patients, they just looked at the MRIs to see what showed up. And what they found was one radi radiologist said 55% of these people have labral tears. And then the other radiologist said 72% uh, of these people have labral tears. So here's what's interesting. All of those people had absolutely no symptoms and the radiologists could find labral tears in over half of these people. What's also interesting is that these two radiologists came up with different interpretations across about 20% of these patients. So number one, that makes you think, well, okay, let's say, let's say the low number, 55% of people have these labral tears. If these people aren't having pain, do these labral tears have anything to do with people who have pain and labral tears? See, ideally what you want to see is that if you have labral tears, you have pain. There should be some sort of obvious correlation between that structural pathology and actual symptoms. But as they're showing here, there doesn't seem to be a connection at all. And so what they actually concluded in this study was that labral tears may not actually be the generators of the pain. It's important to also realize that human beings are interpreting these images. So as you're seeing in this study, some, somebody might think, well, yeah, this is a labral tear. And the other person might think, well, mm, this one's not a labral tear. So even well-trained radiologists can have differing opinions on what they see. So what is actually in a report may itself not actually be a reflection of reality or of, of what's really in there. And also, even if it is, you don't know if that actually has a consequence on the comfort of your shoulder. You might now be thinking, well, okay, that's well and good if you're looking at people who are in their 40s and 60s, but how does that relate to somebody who's more active? Maybe a labral tear could really cause you pain if you're more active, and so shouldn't we do a study on something like that? Well, actually in 2002, there was a study done on professional baseball pitchers. So uh, they, they looked at 28 professional baseball pitchers, all of whom had no shoulder pain, and they did MRIs on their shoulders to see what would turn up. So keep in mind, baseball pitchers, especially at a professional level, are not being gentle on their shoulders. They're doing some pretty high velocity, high stress motions to their shoulders all the time. So they took these guys who have no pain and they looked at their shoulders and what they found was that 79% of these guys had what could be classified as abnormal labrums. So this was a clear sign that what was going on with the labrums was not actually affecting the comfort level of the shoulders. If you think about these two studies, you realize that labral tears are actually fairly common in the general population whether or not you have pain. So if you have pain in the shoulder and you find a labral tear, that doesn't actually mean the labral tear is a thing that's causing your problem. That's like saying, well, you know, I think brown eyes causes you uh, jaw clenching pain and TMJ problems. Well, there's a lot of people who have brown eyes and don't have the problem. So would we assume then that the brown eyes are still the problem? Probably not. If you can have labral tears in a bunch of people who have no symptoms and they're active, they're not active, whatever, and they don't have pain, then that should make 
you think that the labral tears themselves are probably not the major issue that are leading to pain. At this point, the two studies we've talked about have relied on MRIs to diagnose labral tears. So some people will then say, well, there's all these physical tests that can help confirm whether or not the labral tear is causing your problem. So there are a bunch of physical tests that you can do, little maneuvers where you can apply pressure, lift the arm this way, move it that way, and determine supposedly whether or not the labral tear is the thing that's causing your problem. Now the problem with these tests is that they aren't actually um, as accurate as they are presented generally to the public. So actually in 2010 there was a study that looked at a lot of these physical examinations and the study determined that those tests were not providing useful information and that there were no good research studies to show that these tests were actually valid. The title of the study, by the way, completely gives away its conclusions. So this was a systematic review of all the literature they could find that would help them determine whether or not these diagnostic tests are actually useful and valid and practical and able to give any kind of information that physicians or patients could act upon in a reliable way. Uh, so the actual title of this uh, paper is Physical Examination Tests Are Not Valid for Diagnosing Slap Tears, a review. So slap tears basically is a short, fun way of saying superior labrum, anterior, posterior tear. So basically the conclusion was based on what's out there, what's been published, all these diagnostic tests that uh, are believed to give valuable information actually don't have any uh, usefulness. There is no good evidence to say that these tests um, can help you rule in or rule out a labral tear and they definitely can't tell you whether or not the pain that somebody's having is coming from that labral tear. Given the fact that the MRIs um, don't seem to match up to uh, labral tears and pain and showing any sort of corresponding relationship. And given that the, the physical examination tests also don't seem to give you very valuable, useful information, it should make you start to think about whether or not the entire theory of what's going on with labral tears makes practical sense. Based on studies like these, it seems like there's a pretty weak correlation between the labral tears and actual symptoms. If that's the case, it doesn't seem like it's such a great idea to zero in on abnormalities like labral tears to try to solve people's shoulder pain. If you can't find a clear connection between labral tears and pain, then solving the labral tear, fixing it, is unlikely to actually fix the problem since you can't tell if the labral tear is even causing the problem in the first place. The question then is what can you practically do to try to improve the comfort levels and function of somebody's shoulder? From a training perspective, the answer is to deal with muscles. You want to try to get muscles to cooperate. So in normal life, in the course of your life, however long you've been alive on this planet, you've probably seen that your muscles can often do things in ways that you don't want them to function. So you might have a muscle cramp up and seize up and you, you can't move your arm the right way. You might feel a hamstring cramp up and seize up and you can't move your knee correctly. These are all really commonly observed phenomenon that show you how important muscle function is to the way a joint feels and moves. If you want to be proactive and try to develop better shoulder motion, then it's a good idea to train your shoulder to do things gradually and increase the range of motion, increase the strength and stability. A lot of times with PT, this may or may not happen. It really just depends on who you're working with. With trainers, it may or may not happen. It depends on who you're working with. But it's important to actively try to take control of the shoulder function with help or with just self-study.
This right shoulder for me used to be such a problem. I couldn't even raise it out, raise my arm out to the side like this because of catching and snapping and popping. And then the shoulder would just feel unstable all the time. So just doing something like that would have been really tenuous and painful. Over time though, as I learn how to stabilize my shoulders better, stabilize my, get my shoulder blades in the right position, and then start going into bigger ranges of motion, things have gotten a whole heck of a lot better. I'm even working on doing handstands uh, today. The point is, over time, if you can find a way to train the muscles to do the right thing, you can make comfort levels improve a lot, even if you have a labral tear. It's just like those pitchers who have labral tears and are able to pitch at a professional level. It's not the labral tear that's the limiter, it's the function of the muscles and how healthy they are and how well coordinated they are uh, within the muscles themselves and between muscles. In my opinion, the best way to try to improve muscle function and improve shoulder function is to find somebody near you who can help guide you along the way. You need somebody who can coach you and show you this, show you that, and show you how to get around certain problems so that your body starts to move better and better, gets stronger and stronger, more and more capable over time. Find a physical therapist, find a personal trainer, find somebody who understands motion, movement, and getting your body healthy again. It's not just about relaxing and resting and hoping that the problem goes away. If you're a do-it-yourself type of person and you'd like to try to help yourself get out of the shoulder problem, I would suggest you head over to theshoulderfix.com and check out the do-it-yourself program that we've created based on our experience working with people with shoulder problems here and helping them train to higher and higher levels of competence, independence, and freedom. Hopefully this video helps you understand shoulder issues better and helps you free your mind and open your mind so that you can more effectively take proactive steps towards getting your shoulder health back. Be sure to check out theshoulderfix.com if you're looking for a do-it-yourself program. You'll find a link down in the description section below. And I hope you always remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.